we have something for everybody on this particular episode. I'm Chef Rhea Jilts. This is How to Cook Like Cabajan. This is our season three, our celebratory season. So we've been celebrating independence and Christmas and we're gonna look at New Year's. And we're just really excited to be here today. There is a surprise in the show. I am not giving it away under any circumstances. I want you to be genuinely surprised. So I'm not even hinting at it. But it's gonna be very, very interesting. So let's get messy. What are we making today? I am going to be making a casserole. I am going to be making a shepherd's pie. Now, a fact that you might not know is that they're all called cottage pies. So as long as there's meat and gravy and a little mashed potatoes on top, it's a cottage pie. But sometime in the 1800s, um, they started referring to a pie with lamb in it as shepherd's pie, right? Well, the English did, anyhow. So what I have here is some prime black belly lamb from BADMC. Here's the good stuff. Lamb is very tasty meat and it's got that very interesting tasting fat. But black belly lamb is actually a bit more lean than a more international variety of lamb and it has a very distinctive flavor. So we're very proud because black belly lamb is indigenous to Barbados and really found nowhere else that I am aware of. So our shepherd's pie is gonna have in lamb. Have my favorite gadget in the kitchen. You know how I feel about it. And I've attached my grinder. So I'm gonna grind <laughs> my lamb mints myself. Yes, I am. So let's get the bowl underneath. Now, you might know these grinders for grinding fruit because you want great cake for Christmas. I wish I was having great cake too, but I'm not. Hint, hint. So we're gonna get started. You're just gonna turn it on to the stir function so it's not going too fast. I'm just gonna pop some lamb in the top and push down. More lamb and push down, very easy. But I can control the amount of fat and the amount of meat and the size because the attachment has different little um, grates at the front. So this is also the attachment that you would use to make sausages to get the meat all ground up. And you know how we feel about sausages. As we said before, sausages is a way to use up every piece of the animal and that's very sustainable and we support that fully. So we are getting all of our lamb in here. It's coming out nice. Mixing up what fat is on this lamb with the meat and it's going to give us a delicious pie. Let's just get this going. So as I said, the BADMC always has really lovely, lovely um, products. So you can get your fresh meat, you can get your wines of all things. You can get your burgers, your mm, meatballs, all sorts. Sometimes they have mints and stuff as well. Turkey wings. Right, so I think I have enough of this now. Nice bowl full, okay. So I'm gonna deal with this later. I'm just gonna get all of it off that I can. Mm-hmm, put that there. Nice low temperature. Okay, and as you can see, I've got a pot of water. It's been boiling away for quite some time. And it is for my mash, for my casserole, yam. So I'm doing a yam mash. I find with yam mashes, it helps to simply put a little English potato in because the final consistency, it kind of holds a bit better, it's a bit smoother. So it's a very Bajan shepherd's pie. Um, going with yam instead of straight um, English potatoes. So that, that's important to note. And I'm cooking off the lamb, so salt and pepper, cook it off, 
it brings out some of the fat. You put it to one side, then I'm going to saute all my vegetables, deglaze with some wine, everything goes back together, cook it down, and that's going to be the base for my um, shepherd's pie. I have here, we have some bell peppers, we have carrots, I have garlic, I have onions, I have celery, um, I also have some fresh uh, margarine. And I'm going to be using a little tomato paste. I'm going to be using some stock and some red wine that I picked up from Waitrose. So, so far I've gotten just like the wild variety of things from Waitrose. So wine, I have tomato paste. A little while back I had um, foil of all things, you know. It's, they have a really wide variety. Now, I'll tell you that with this lamb mint, I'm not going to put any oil in the pan. It's not necessary. Lamb has a very high fat content, so just gonna put that in. Oh, a little too much. And I want it to. I want it to sear and not sweat. So salt, pepper, I'm searing it to get some flavor and color in. Um, so I'm going for. A Pretty high heat, medium to high heat rather than a low heat. My yams are on. Trying to get that little golden brown color a little bit. That's flavor. That represents caramelization. So you stir it, you hit it hot, let it sit in the pan, and then you take it out of the heat. Alright, so that's one batch. Let's see. Whoa, so that's one batch. So, all right, so in with our lamb. Pan is nice and hot. You hear that sizzle? Don't want to put in too much because I want it to sear and not to sweat. So, small batches of meat, high heat. Let it sit there. At this point, I can just start to dismantle my kitchen aid because I need to clear this up to make the mash. I need to also, whoops. So I'm gonna be doing pasta dishes. So I'm getting my pasta water going all like now. Right? And so I'm gonna do a cold pasta dish and a hot pasta dish. So these can serve as either a full meal or a side dish. So, got a stir on my lamb outside. You just put that here, out of the way and out of trouble. Get it to all fit in my container nice and neat. We're in now with the vegetables for our lamb essentially lamb gravy. Um, I like to put in my celery and carrots first because I find if you put in your um, garlic first, you know, it burns. So I usually put in those first and then put the garlic on top. So we got this. Good scoop of garlic. And they start to get a little color and then my onions can go in. Gonna grab some fresh herbs here and pull those off. All right, so it's Christmas and we are doing our level best to make sure that we are ready for the holiday season. We have meals planned ahead of time. A casserole is a really big help with something like that because it's like a one plate meal because you just, everything on one plate Everything in one little casserole dish. It's got veg, it's got meat, it's got gravy, it's got starch. So it saves you a lot of time. So maybe you make a few casseroles and also they store well. So you can freeze that casserole and there you are. You would always be prepared. You can share. Because you're not making a little bowl of casserole. You're not making a teeny tiny shepherd's pie. If you're making shepherd's pie, you're going big, right? I also am going to put a little crap black pepper because I like the flavor of that. Mm -hmm. okay. 
color, color, color. Now, here we have some nice tomato puree. You know what I like about this tube, this toothpaste pouch? I'll tell you what I like about it. Not having to find a container to put the excess tomato puree in after I use how much I want for my recipe. That is what you call innovative design. I like that. So this is Waitrose. And that means it's organic, there's no preservatives, all the good stuff. So yes. Okay. So I'm looking for my wine to deglaze and my beef stock. And these start at like maybe $19, $20, so very affordable, right? So we've got our aromatics in there. Now I'm gonna add in my um, peppers. I kind of put them in as, as, as late as possible because look at that beautiful color. So they're gonna go in. But I don't want them to cook too much. And my lamb is going to go in as well. And I'm going to top up with my stock. Okay, so that's beautiful. We're going to let that cook down a little bit. All of our lovely, lovely lamb gravy is cooked down to this wonderful deliciousness that we have here. And so we can turn that off. And our yams and potato are ready to make our mash. I'm gonna pour. All right, don't take any chances. So that is yam and potatoes. So these go into the KitchenAid so that we can get them whipped up nice and soft. So those are in. Do not pour cold milk and butter in your mash. You warm them up first. So let's get some whole milk, plenty of dairy here. So I generally go in with a mixture of half milk, half cream. Uh, that is my preferred amount. So half milk, half cream. So equal amounts then of milk and cream. And I'm going to just grab some butter, right? And you let that get warm. And the butter is melted and that will be enough. So you're working with hot potatoes, hot yams, hot milk and then your mash is gonna be nice and, and smooth and easy to manipulate. If you put cold things, if you get cold, either cold potatoes or cold milk, you will end up with lumps of hard, not so tastiness in your mash. That's just my advice to you. So just getting everything hot enough to melt down the butter. We're not reducing it or doing anything fancy. So let me just make sure that we are ready here. Uh, pull it, good, so it's seated. We're just gonna get this started. So that's gonna start crushing your yam and your English potatoes, yeah? And you can, as it crushes them and they get finer and finer, so as you crush them, they start to get finer and finer, you can make it 
move a bit faster so that they get as fine as possible. And you can slow that down and start pouring in your hot mixture. Look at that. And then you start to see it become mash. So the consistency changes as soon as the liquid gets in there. So let me make it a little faster now. And I'll slow down a little bit because I don't want the liquid flying all over the kitchen. So I slow it down a little bit again and hot liquid in. And I am telling you that you're gonna deal with this while it's hot and that while it's hot when you put your um, shepherd's pie together. Because if you let yam mash sit and get cold, you will not be able to make a casserole with it. You will have to start over again. And you will not like it. Okay, I like that consistency. I want some salt in there. Yes. Okay, and my milk and cream is well, well hot now. So that's in. And I'm just gonna take it up really high for a minute. And that looks good to me. I'm gonna taste to make sure that pinch of salt was enough. In okay, case so I need another one. I need another one. Quick blitz. Just a touch. And that looks good to me. So, I'm gonna grab my casserole dish. I'm gonna get my lamb gravy for that gorgeous color. I'm gonna fill that in there. Nice. Spread it out. Mm -hmm. I'm just quickly gonna grab my mash down, detach my head, turn that a little bit, I want all my mash, yeah? Miracle of miracles, a spatula. Okay. So this is how I tend to, I start in a corner and move across. Like building a wall. Look at bad boys. On top. So this is a shepherd's pie, people. And once you bake this, you are done. Right. And maybe this could feed your whole family or you could get portions of shepherd's pie every day for a week or you can make it now and eat it later because it will stay in the freezer and when you tie it down it'll be awesome yam of course is a very good source of fiber and it's a very healthy carb so that's why we decided to introduce it to our Christmas cornucopia of dishes and possibilities. As you can see, now you can just swipe and finish your, so it's quick and easy like that. And then, you know, I want a little roughness on the top, so I don't want it to be too smooth. The roughness creates little peaks and they get hard and you get the crunchiness. If it's too smooth, there's no crunchiness. I like crunchiness. so. I'm kind of messing it up on purpose a little bit. And I have some grated cheese in the fridge. I also got from Waitrose, so this is a medium strength cheddar. Medium and not the extra sharp, which I usually like to eat raw or on a nice cheese board, right? So cheddar is very interesting cheese. It ages, so it is a kind of hard cheese, but not so hard like Parmesan that it doesn't melt and still give you some string and some goo. So a cheese that I like and I know that is a cheese that every Bajan likes. Now I just have some breadcrumbs 
extra crunch. I like the contrast between a bit of crunch on the top and the smooth yam yeah, mash on the bottom. Isn't she lovely? Okay, we're gonna pop this in the oven. No! <laughs> <laughs> Keep you and your family safe with Sol Gas. Here are some helpful tips to keep you and your family safe when cooking with Sol Gas. Never tamper with the cylinder and only use the Sol approved regulator and a hose designed for use with LPG. Securely connect the regulator to the cylinder valve until it clicks into place and is properly fastened and secured. It is important to check the hose clips and the rubber hose to ensure they are in good working condition and properly secured. It is important to check your hose and regulator and change them as needed. Change your rubber hose every two years. Change your regulator every five years. If there are signs of damage to your regulator, contact an approved Sol gas distributor or a Sol service station for replacement immediately. Safety first with Sol gas. Right, so I'm going to do a whole week pesto pasta with vegetables yes um, so we're using Roma whole wheat pasta right here I've already cooked it off and let it cool because it's a cold salad so I'm, I don't want to be working with hot noodles um, so we have the spiral pasta here ready now I'm going to get my vegetables for this salad ready thought you might like to watch me prepare them I'm going to put a little uh, Rachel sunflower oil on it. Okay, just a little salt. Just get it nice and oily all around. Don't really need the salt necessarily, but I always like to make sure there's flavor. This is how we're going to prepare our pepper. Make sure the oil is all the way around. All right, good. I want my hand oily. And we're putting it directly on the flame. So we're gonna basically char the outside. So that thin layer of skin that goes around the outside of the sweet pepper, um, we're gonna char that. So you do it directly on the flame because you're gonna char that till it's all nice and black, but the flesh inside won't be quite cooked yet. So that's what you want. So you don't wanna make it overcooked and soft, right? So we are putting this on here. And then I'm just gonna very, very quickly Heat my pan up. And I'm just gonna just toss these tomatoes just in a little oil, salt, and pepper. And those are gonna, gonna give, they're gonna they're gonna go into the salad and give me a nice pop of color. So I'm gonna have this gorgeous orange, yellow kind of pepper, some tomatoes, and my green pesto. A little more sunflower oil, a little waitrose essential there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's vegetarian, there's no meat, so we're gonna add our protein by putting in some good almond nuts. Almost done. This gives it a really nice flavor, kind of smoky. All right, so our pan is starting to smoke just a little bit. So I'm just gonna quickly toss in our tomatoes. Get some cracked black pepper. A little salt. Good, good color on the bottom. Do it a little more. So the more evenly distributed the color, the easier this out, this um, outer membrane is gonna lift off the sweet pepper. See it's starting to come off already. And the pepper underneath still has that gorgeous orange color. Perfect. Oops, yeah. Okay, now here's the trick of it. Yeah, and my tomatoes are dry now, so I'm actually just gonna add them straight into the bowl right now. Good stuff. Turn that off. They can cool down, just gonna put them there for a while. Um, while we deal with this pepper. So let me just put that here. So, Normally, you might do this in a bowl and then cover it with plastic. So the pepper is hot and when you cover it, 
It causes a condensation in here and it basically it sweats the pepper. So the skin is very easy to just quickly um, wipe off. So I've chosen to do it in a Tupperware because uh, that's easy and this is reusable. So it's gonna create the same as that environment. So I'm gonna leave this in here for a bit and I'm gonna be able to take the skin all the way off just like that, like magic. So while we wait for that to happen, I grab some Parmesan right here, got some almonds, um, I've got some organic basil that was dropped off this morning. I'm just gonna grab my KitchenAid blender. Straight from the source, they say, so that means this olive oil for them, it comes from Italy. Now, my trick for getting my pesto done, pesto is very, very simple um, sauce, like the simplest. My trick is to put all of my ingredients in first, all my hard ingredients. So I'm putting in my garlic, I'm putting in my almond, and I'm putting in my Parmesan, which I've already had grated. I'm putting it all in there. And a little salt and a little pepper. I'm gonna get my, right, I'm gonna get my food processor going. I'm gonna break these up, essentially. All right, gonna add some oil. Pause. Okay, so. Why am I doing it like this? Um, I have found that blenders and food processors get hot as they process things with like a lot of solids in them, right? And what that means for my basil is that if I put it in at the beginning with everything else before it reaches texture that I prefer for my pesto, then instead of getting a nice bright green pesto, I get kind of like this dull brown pesto. Um, some people get around it by putting like ice blocks in. Uh, I don't want to do that. So I found that my way is to make the paste and then let the basil go in. As soon as it turns the color I want, I'm out. So that's my personal preference. Right. So now, with the almonds, of course, it is going to be a different kind of little brown color. Um, it may be affect our pesto, the, the final green, but that doesn't matter. The flavor is going to be amazing. And you have a little protein in there. So now I'm going to take out that attachment. I'm going to put in my basil leaves. Put them all in. Just push them in as quick as possible and I don't want them to be in there for too long. So in everybody goes. Perfect. Now to go with the almond, I'm going for a kind of a chunky basil, a kind of chunky pesto. Um, I'm not gonna make it too, too smooth. So I'm gonna stop it. Just a little finer on the leaves and a bit more distribution. Because pine nuts, of course, and almonds are very different. So you're gonna actually feel this texture in your salad as opposed to if you had done it with traditional pine nuts, right? And I'm done. And that's a really nice color. You can just see a nice green and you can see all the chunks of almond in there. Um, and it's gonna make for a presentation that I want. So I'm gonna take Safety first, take your blades out of your food processor before you taste it or do anything else to it. Now grab a spoon, give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm, that's delicious. You've got the spiciness of the uh, raw garlic. You've got that pesto, that basil herbaceousness to it. And then you have little chunks of almond that you can chew on. Now we stopped it just in time because, and I'll take this off as well, makes life easier. Oops, it felt slightly warm when I took it out. And that is because it was starting to get hot from all the grinding. And that's precisely what I, what I want to 
avoid and that's why I put in the uh, basil leaves last so that's good so basically this pesto will have in cheese it will have in well in this case almonds but it usually has in pine nuts so you'll have parmesan garlic olive oil salt and pepper cheese uh, basil <laughs> I said cheese twice yeah probably because I like cheese right Add this in here, give it a nice toss. So now you need a little salt for the pasta itself and a little crap black pepper. Yes. Right, so this is pretty simple um, and tasty, if I do say so myself. Let's just make a little room, look some basil got away. Let's just slide this over. So we're gonna deal with our pepper now to get that pop of color and awesomeness. So as you can see, there's liquid, there's water in there where it wasn't before. And that's the condensation. So just look at that, all those juices, right? And you just slide that off, just like that. So simple. And that's all the outer skin. It's just coming off. You don't have to do anything special. Does it to itself. Good, so I'm going to cut this up now. So I get off all the little extra back. But I don't want to wash the pepper, right? Because I don't want to wash off all the flavor I just put on it. So you're just kind of scraping it off. If a little bit of the black gets in, this is not a problem. So I'm just gently removing it, but I don't want to wash my pepper at this point because that would mean that I wasted all my time getting it to be so awesome. Flip it open. There's my pepper. Mm -hmm. So, see it's steaming inside. So it's like as lightly cooked as you could want it to be. It's nice and firm. Ever so lightly caressed with flame. Oops. And flavorful. And it's still this beautiful color. Look at that. So I'm gonna do some irregular shapes for my salad. Nice bits of yellow. And in they go. Ha ha! Isn't that nice? And then it take us about a minute to sort it out. Pull that off. Okay. Seeds off. Just use the back of your knife or the front part. Just gently take your seeds off. I want al dente pasta, especially since I'm gonna be putting it in a very, very nice sauce. And so, that means I'm gonna be timing my pasta very carefully, so I'm actually gonna pop out my phone and put it on a timer, because I like to know that my phone, that my pasta is cooked to the exact correct amount of time, All right? Lord forbid I overcook the pasta and then put it in a sauce and it all becomes mush. I, I just could not live with it. So here we have our finished whole wheat salad. Load it up with. So this could be meal prep for you. If you want to, it'll keep really nicely in the fridge. It could also be a really nice side dish for Christmas. Um, you could also, I dare suppose, do some, some grilled tomato. What am I talking about? We already have grilled tomato. You can also do some grilled chicken breast or a nice piece of fish or whatnot and make this into a meal for a non-vegetarian. <laughs> it's the point that I was trying to make. <laughs> so just a few pops of green on your salad, you know, for presentation purposes. Okay, so as you can see, I brought our pasta pot over because it's time to make our final dish for the day. 
So here's the gluten-free Roma pasta that we're going to be using. So this is a nice spaghetti. And I'm just going to get in there, pop this out, and here we have them. Now, important thing about pasta and cooking pasta, I like to time it to an exact six minutes. Sometimes gluten-free pasta deviates from this particular rule, but six minutes on pasta makes it al dente. I do not like overcooked pasta, especially since I'm making a sauce for this pasta. I'm making a seafood sauce for this pasta. And that means the pasta has to be cooked twice effectively in order to finish the dish. So I have my six minutes on my phone, like I always do. Salt my water. Yeah, now we're cooking, right? I like to spread my noodles out like so. I put my lid on so I can see them and I hit start. Let's get this uh, sauce going. So I'm gonna do a very, very simple cream sauce. So it's gonna be a seafood, uh, seafood cream sauce, very simple. We're gonna use some lovely cream from Sunday morning, which we picked up at Hotel Foods. We're gonna grab our Pine Hill Dairy milk. Um, if you want to make, if you wanna take some of the fat out of your sauce, which I don't currently, but you might want to. You can go for 2% milk instead, for example. If you may think that makes a difference after we put all the cream and the cheese and stuff in there. I'm gonna put in a little knob of butter. It does give you a really nice flavor, but I'm not gonna put too much, so my oil is hot. Onions first. I'm gonna put my mushrooms in next. Those take a little bit to cook down. I'm always searing and caramelizing everything and using hot, hot because like what the water content really throws off everything. So mushrooms, for example, they need to be cooked down well. And do you hear that song? Pasta's done. So I'm gonna dismiss that, put the phone away. And I'm going to come up. Very slowly, allowing the water to escape with my pasta. Two, three, and here we go. All done. And when you bite it, it should form a bit of white in the middle. So you could almost see your, your bite mark because that's what al dente means to the tooth. And that is how you want your pasta. Now, since we're not ready for this pasta quite yet, I'm just gonna put a little oil on it so that the extra starch on the outside of the noodles doesn't cause it to stick together and clump in an unattractive manner. So give it a gentle stir. You've oiled it up, maybe even a, a pinch of salt. And we're gonna just put that one side, as it were, until we're ready. So I'm actually gonna move that completely out of my way. It's a rather large bowl. And we're gonna go back to what we were doing before. So, <laughs> now we're gonna add our shrimp and our peppers, and then our guest is gonna come out to join us. So. This is going. Shrimp is right here. I'm gonna start adding some shrimp. I'm gonna put the peppers like as late as possible because I don't want them to overcook. So this is going pretty well. Right now, I need to half my cream and milk again. I find that if you use all cream, it's very, very rich. It's almost sticky in consistency. And if you use only milk, it's not rich enough. So I almost always put half milk, half cream in whatever I'm doing. So that's good. Use all of that up. Lovely. So that's gonna start to reduce a little bit. It's a simple Alfredo, so that means that I can 
put some nutmeg on it. One of our three Christmas spices <laughs> that we put in everything, right? A little nutmeg there. Get some flavoring. Again, a little red, a little color on my shrimp, which is what I want, but it's not cooked. It's still glassy. So you know it's not completely cooked through, which is good. And now that this is reducing, it's time to introduce our friend. So I'm gonna grab my glove right here. So this is a cut resistant glove. Um, you know, I'm an expert with my knives and whatnot, but if you feel the need to protect your hands because you're not so expert, you can grab one of these from Safety Supply, yeah? And here she is. All over the Caribbean Sea, you can find yourself a nice spiny lobster to eat. And they're always in our best restaurants, yeah? This one is alive and kicking, but she won't be for long. So if you are squeamish, I would look away. But this is what I would use my cut resistant glove for because there's spikes all over. As you can see, she's a kicker. And there's spikes all over. So right between the eyes, into the brain. You want to kill her instantly. Right? Good stuff. And as you can see, your glove keeps her nice and positioned. Right? Going to turn her around. Come down through the back. All the way down the back. You're going to split the whole tail open. It takes some strength. Get in there. Right? Just gonna finish off at the end. The lobster is dead now, obviously. Um, there's some involuntary muscle spasms. Don't worry about them. So, since our lobster is female, as you can see inside, we have this coral. That's um, really valuable. So I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna keep it. So grab me a little spoon. Just gonna scoop that out of there. Right. It's called, and of course, now you know what the word, um, that color, coral, where it comes from. That beautiful bright orange. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna save that. Not gonna throw that away. Gonna wash it off and make some coral butter later. It's gonna lift out the center line there. Don't want that. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of meat in there. We're gonna keep cleaning. Take out the bits that we don't want. So that all you can see is all of that fabulous meat. Just gonna take my knife now. Pull it out. So it's got a thin membrane inside. So it's actually pretty easy to move it away from the shell. Like that. I'm gonna go in now from the very bottom. Keep cleaning with your spoon. And lift out all the tail meat. So now I'm gonna lose the glove, which was really just for keeping it quiet. I'm gonna stick a finger in here. I've got my finger in. I'm just gonna get a spoon and clear the little membrane that is stuck on the side. Just lift it up. So if you get underneath this membrane here, you pull, the whole thing comes up. But if you are sticking your fingers in between the down into flesh instead of in between the membrane and the shell itself, then it will not come up. So you have to get your fingers down in there first. So this is our entire tail. Gonna lift it up. 
I find a spoon obviously is better than a knife. It's safer than poking a knife in there and you know, chancing injury. So I'm lifting all the meat all the way up. Easy like that. A little messy, but in essentially a whole, well, two halves of the lobster tail. Like so, right? And as you can see, there's no lobster meat left inside. So I'm just gonna clean this up and <laughs> we're gonna come back and finish off our seafood pasta. So we cleaned up, now we're back. So I'm just gonna grab, oops, piece of my lobster. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but um, the coral is essentially like lobster eggs, basically. That's how we know it's a female, in case I didn't mention that before. Now I'm just gonna cut fairly big chunks for my seafood pasta. Remember we're using Roma's gluten-free spaghetti, so this is a spaghetti seafood dish. So we've been going, the shrimp is now beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pink. Plenty of time for our peppers to go in. Look at that. Give them a quick sprinkle with the salt. We don't want them too cooked, so I kept them for as long as possible before we put in and let everything else cook first. So now I've got my separate bits of lobster. All right. So I'm gonna give them a little salt and pepper just before you throw them in, make sure that they're seasoned well. All right. And in they go as well to the hot pan. Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna go and bring back our friend the pasta. As you said, you're cooking it twice, and that's why I didn't want it overcooked. So in that goes into the cream. And at this point, I'm gonna start adding my parmesan. See what consistency it becomes when it starts coating. So lobster needs a minute. Only just went in the pan. That lobster is so fresh, it's giving me sushi vibes. So I'm just gonna move this around. Make sure my noodles are nicely separated. Give it a flip, nice and, I don't want it too, too cheesy. I want just a nice coat on my noodles. That seems perfect. Excellent. So now everything has got a nice, light, glossy pink going on. I'm gonna bring the heat up a little bit and go directly in with our white wine. So we're gonna finish these with a little, little weight rolls. A little wet heat so that the lobster cooks without overcooking. And in they go. And there you have it. So I'm gonna transfer over to my plate. Nice creamy pasta, nice fish, <laughs> fish. Nice lobster and shrimp on top. Let's put that right there and there. A little extra cheese, some spinach, and some fresh basil. Yes. I'm just gonna do a little clean down so that we can appreciate the bounty. So the good thing about these dishes that we did today is they can be a meal or they can be a side. They can be the whole thing or they can go with something else and they're pretty easy and quick to prepare and it means that they will save you time this Christmas and stress and many, many problems. So, if you remember, we did our whole wheat pesto pasta. I like saying that. <laughs> whole wheat pesto pasta. Pivot. No, no, I messed it up. <laughs> we have our seafood uh, spaghetti with fresh lobster. Could not get any fresher, believe me. <laughs> I don't think that some people whose names I'm not gonna call have recovered from the experience. <laughs>
That would be fresh lobster. Um, fresh basil, nice white wine, cream sauce, delicious. But we're gonna know in a minute, right? And most, last but not least, is our genuine lamb and yam shepherd's pie. Now it's definitely time to taste. So I'm going to grab this spoon. I need a little plate. I'm tasting everything, you know, for quality control purposes. Just to check. So I'm gonna get a little of this. I'm gonna grab some of our fresh lobster. Not a dish for the faint hearted. Screamers are especially discouraged from attending class on the day when we're um, <clears throat> preparing lobster. I like that word, let's, let's call it preparing lobster. I, of course, want a corner because it goes without saying. You see the color on top? <sighs> Y'all know. Y'all know how I like it. Look at that. Woo! Delicious. Okay, now I'm gonna know if it's delicious. So let's go in for our healthy choice first. Pesto, pasta, and our roasted peppers. I like the almonds. I give it a different dimension than just classic uh, pine nuts. Let's go and try our minced lamb shepherd's pie with the yam and the nice cheese from Rachel's, all that medium sharp cheddar. It tastes like, like we got friends and family and somebody loves us. You know, it tastes like we come from a good home. That's what I would say. Lobster long. It's a soft, delicious pillow. Mm. I'm gonna see you next week. Obviously, I have to um, <clears throat> clean up the set. So, we're gonna say bye bye now. Um, wait till you see our next episode. I hope this helps you get through the entire season without collapsing. A sample dish, they're full of nutrients. Bye bye from How to Cut Like a Bajan for this episode but see you next week massy card credit card has gone digital download the new e-wallet by massy card app that gives massy card credit card holders more power to scan to pay earn massy points send credit thanks man pay bills and so much more that's awesome easy instant and secure from your smartphone go digital with the free e-wallet by massy card app now available on Google Play or the Apple App Store.